Okay, we're going to go through uh, the shell method. We're going to start off with the rotate. Well, we're going to rotate this region about the y-axis. All these are going to be about the y-axis. Now, when you rotate about the y-axis, can you see my mouse? Uh, we're going to get this object here. Now, the way we've been doing it before, and let me actually go through this real fast. We used to take the region, rotate it about the y-axis, and then find a cross section. Here, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to break up, find the cross section first, and then rotate it. Just so all we're going to do is look at the, the rotation of the cross section. That's going to help us identify the, the radius, the outside radius and inside radius of this circle. So if we were to, again, break all these up into little cross sections, now remember the more cross sections we have, the better approximation of the volume we'd get. Now we're going to take this cross section, do it all over again, but then what we're going to do is just to show you how the volume is formed, the solid is formed, is we're going to rotate all of the cross sections uh, so then you can get an idea of what the solid would look like. So right now what it's doing is it's showing you the back half of this solid uh, to see how all of these are formed by washers just being stacked one on top of the other. Then they'll put in the front half of the washer. And there's our solid. So can we always use washers? Now take this graph here, this region. Uh, you can picture it being rotated. Again, what we're going to do is we're just going to take one cross section and rotate that. Now the problem with this is once we rotate the cross section, we have to identify the outside and inside radii. The radius is always the distance from the axis of revolution to that point of wherever the, the outside radius is. I have to go through this again. <laughs> well, what would happen here is when you look at the distance from the y-axis to the outside radius and the inside radius, they both use the same function. So your formula is going to be pi times big radius squared minus pi times little radius squared. But the radius functions are the same. And so you just, they all cancel and get zero. So using this method uh, of washers with a uh, function like this will not work. So here's what the shell method is going to do. We're going to find our typical cross section, still rotate about the y-axis. But notice that the cross sections are now vertical, and that when we rotate, we're going to get an open cylinder. Okay. So now let's take a look at. Oh, and, well, I'm sorry, we keep going. Um, and if you would take all these cross sections and rotate them around, this is how you'd form the solid. Notice that the solid is made up of multiple rect um, sorry, multiple cylinders. So what we're going to do is have to just find the volume of all the cylinders and add them up. Much like finding the volume of all the washers and adding them up. All right, we're going to move on to this one here. Okay, so we have this two, same region. This one's going to be done using the washer method. This one, the shell method. Now, in both of these, we've made cross sections. When we use the washer method, the cross section will be a washer. Duh. And when we use the shell method, the cross section will form this cylinder. Okay. So, in the washer method, we found the volume of the outside circle, I'm sorry, the area of the outside circle minus the inside circle. Now, as these uh, both are rotating the, the cross sections, you'll notice that in the end, we will make the same solid. But notice in, in this one, the solid is made up by stacking washers on top of each other. So we just had to integrate the area of the washers. Here we're stacking cylinders. So we just have to integrate the area of all the cylinders. So if you were to take a, cross, a typical cross section of both methods, this method here, again we have the washer, and this one over here, this, the, the cylinder. Uh, down here we have the formula. Now I actually wrote it as the volume equals because what we're actually doing is uh, finding the volume of all these washers and then adding them all together 
to find the volume of the overall solid. Uh, so we have the outside radius minus the inside radius. Now this dy, that's this little distance here. Okay, that's delta, uh, well, we can call delta y, it's dy. Because right, remember, the more cross sections we have, or the more partitions we have, the thinner this washer gets. Um, so this actually acts as like the depth of the washer. But if I said let's find the volume of the cylinder, maybe it's not as easy as this one where we just say, oh, it's the area of the outside radius minus the inside. So let's take a look at the washer, just the washer by itself. If you were to cut, so you can see how I, I made a gap here and I cut it, Now, if I were to lay it flat, I'd get something like this. So now the volume of this rectangular object now is going to be length times width times height. Now notice that this distance here, this length, okay, if you go back to how it was formed, it was formed by cutting this in half and, fold, and, and laying it out. Well, this distance right here, see the mouse, that distance right there is the same as this distance. So, oh, where do I go back? There you go. The, the distance here is going to be the circumference of my cylinder. Well, I guess circle, but circumference of the cylinder. And that's going to be 2 pi radius. Okay, so circumference is 2 pi r. And the height of the cylinder is, if you go back, I don't know if I can go back one more. Yeah. Notice that the height of the cylinder is made from the top function minus the bottom function. So the height is going to be, I'm just going to call f of x my top function minus g of x my bottom function. Now notice that here I said the radius was x. This is something that um, I should have just probably put r of x. Which I, well, in this specific case, it was x. I'll go over more of that in class. Um, but once you find the volume of all those cylinders, you would stack all the cylinders on top of each other. So we would integrate from A to B of the volume of each cylinder, keep adding them on top of each other. And so that's how the, the shell method is going to work, and we'll go ahead and do some examples now.